Welcome back to The Rulebook, everybody. I'm your host, Alex Palmer, and I'm the queen of learning things the hard way so you don't have to. On this podcast, we're talking about the mistakes I made and the lessons I learned along the way to create the rules I now live by. On each episode, we'll be discussing a new rule, how I created it, why I came up with it, and how you can apply it in your own life. So let's get into it. Welcome back to The Rulebook, everyone. Thank you so much again for bearing with me through this bronchitis infection. I'm about to change the name to this show to, ugh, I'm sick again. Yeah, so I'm on my third round of steroids, and now I'm also on antibiotics. So the brain fog was just far too much for me to handle yesterday. So I figured best for me to push this episode to Tuesday. So happy Tuesday. This week, um, I feel like I have to put a trigger warning on the episode. This is going to be about sexual assault, the Trump verdict and the play Prima Facie. And if these are topics that you don't want to hear about, I will see you next week for episode number 26. For those of us who are going to stick around, this week I went to go see the play Prima Facie with my girlfriend Sasha. I had heard a lot of buzz around this play. Apparently it won a bunch of um, Olivier Awards, Best best Actress, Best Play. It is a one-woman show, and now it is on Broadway for a limited engagement for 10 weeks, and I think it's already been playing for four weeks. So... If you want to see it, I highly suggest you spend the money and go book your tickets now because it is well worth it. I think it is the best Broadway show I've seen this season, and it's the only show where I really, truly wanted to jump out of my seat and scream and applaud at so many different moments. It was that powerful. So check that out if you are into theater or you want to know what the heck I'm talking about and have context for this episode. On my way to Times Square, I was stopped by a guy in the middle of the street asking me, oh, can I take your picture? And I was like, okay. So I I took some street style images on my way to the theater. I was a block away. And then the guy goes, okay, so it's $10 per picture. And he had already downloaded the five photos into my phone. So that was like my weird New York moment before going to see the play. But I wanted to include it here just because I have an extra little special rule for you guys this week, which is when someone comes up to you in the street and asks you if they can take your picture, please ask if it is free first before you agree because you will look pretty stupid. I did not end up paying $10 per picture, thank God, because then I would have had to pay 50 bucks for some not great pictures. I'll insert them here. But I just wanted to include that in case you guys do make your way to Times Square and experience the same thing I just experienced going to see Prima Facci. Okay, but let's move on onto the good stuff. As you know, Donald Trump was also convicted of sexual assault and defamation this week against E. Jean Carroll. She accused him of raping her in a Bergdorf Goodman dressing room back in 1996 or sometime around then. She could not remember the date, the month, the year, unfortunately, but she did tell two friends and was able to call them as witnesses. And under this new um, Survivors Act that New York has just enacted, she's able to bypass the statute of limitations and sue the person who did this to her, which is Donald Trump. So he was found guilty, which is mind blowing, not only because of everything that I just stated about her not being able to remember certain things, because if you are ever called to testify, having your story straight and having all the facts is obviously one of the most important things. Um, And I think the timing of me seeing this play was so bizarrely opportune and perfect because Prima Facci is actually sort of about this. Um, Prima Facci means on first impression or at first view. So basically it's a legal term and it means these are the facts at first until they're picked apart. So this is what is accepted as true until it is proven false. In the play, Prima Facci, I hope you can stay with me for this one. Um, She is a criminal defense attorney and she ends up representing a lot of people who are accused of sexual assault and she's so good at her job she gets them off but in a weird twist of events she ends up being raped by a colleague another criminal defense attorney and she sort of realizes it's not just that she's good at her job as to why she gets these accused off all the time it's because the system is really not set up to get justice for the victims i'm not a lawyer but i i can say this I think it's pretty clear that the justice system, and the play points this out too, really isn't set up to handle these sort of complaints, sexual assault complaints, because they are not black and white. They are so often gray, especially now when alcohol is involved and there's a lot of questions about what is consent and who can consent. And 
these things are just far more complicated than I think the people who wrote the laws ever anticipated. And they, in the play points out, these laws were written by men. Uh, so just take that for what it is as well. So what is rule number 25 then you ask? When you're forced to play a losing game, you're probably gonna have to fight more than once. Margaret Thatcher said some variation of that and I'm not sure what the context was, but basically, if we know going forward that the legal system probably isn't set up for victims to get the justice that they're really searching for and deserve, that doesn't mean you can just drop out of the, the drop out, right? You still should come forward to protect others and to hopefully make a difference and make a change in the future. We know this. In the play, she, the character, is going over the times where she was on the other side, right? Where she was the lawyer who was questioning these victims. And she says that there's one instance that stands out to her. And it's one in which the woman says, look, I'm not getting anything out of this. He already did this to me. You know what I mean? I'm doing this to protect other women from him. And that really cuts deep because... <sighs> The crime has obviously already been committed and, you know, you're already traumatized and your life's already affected and whatever else, depending on the situation. So why do people come forward? It's not for justice because so oftentimes you don't get justice or justice isn't what you thought it would be. It doesn't look how you thought it would look or feel how you thought it would feel. So more often than not, it's really for the greater good. It's for other people. You come forward so that this person is has this strike against him so that next time, the next person who comes forward, if it happens, has a better chance at winning or a better chance at getting the justice they deserve. So the play was phenomenal. I mean, this was a one woman show, as I said, and man, oh man, it, it had me on the edge of my seat. And I think it's very hard for an actress to do that, for, for someone to really keep your attention. I think Obviously, we all know the attention spans of everyone is like pretty limited these days. So to be a one woman actress up there talking about legalese and like these very dark and complicated and depressing topics and to keep someone on the edge of your seat. Bravo. So often I wanted to scream in the middle of the play. Believe women, believe women, believe people when they come forward. And that's just really not the case. So that brings me back to Donald Trump. Like, it's crazy that they actually found him guilty of two of these, of sexual assault and defamation. Maybe they didn't find him guilty of the rape. Thank God E. Jean Carroll was brave enough, bold enough to go up against him. And she said the only reason she did it is because he kept on dragging her name through the mud. So she felt she had no choice. So had Trump just kept his mouth shut, maybe none of this would have even happened. Um... And you know what? The play made a really good point that one in three women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime or already have been. One in three. That is a crazy number. So I think a lot of people can relate to what she's saying. I was reading in the comments of the Wall Street Journal, one commenter was like, I was going to vote for Trump, but now I truly cannot with this verdict. It's too much for me. Anyone who votes for him, she's like, I just don't understand. So I do think that it actually changed people's minds because I think... A lot of people have experienced sexual abuse, unfortunately, in this country. And it reminds me of a report that I did when I was at journalism school. And it was, a, it was around 2014, 2015, when Emma Solkowitz was walking around Columbia University with a mattress strapped to her back. I mean, I think it was part of one of her thesis is, but it was also because her rape was mishandled by Columbia University. And this was like her statement of protest, literally strapping the mattress where it happened onto her back and carrying it around. And my God, she received a lot of media attention for that and good on her because she really raised awareness for the subject of sexual assault on college campuses. And so anyway, when I was, I was at NYU at the same time that this was happening and I was working on my thesis with um, my colleague Rajiv Deer, who we wrote the article for Al Jazeera for, we ended up looking into sexual assault crime logs by numerous 15 or 16 New York City college campuses and we were able to spot how often these college campuses were mishandling complaints of sexual assault. Either they didn't record the complaints properly or they didn't even forward them to the right official agencies. So many times these complaints didn't even end up going to the NYPD and it was the fault of the school. 
But if you want to read that article, I'm going to link it below. It's tw it was from 2015 and it's 2023 today. And yet I read that I reread it and I was like, wow, not much has changed. I remember when we were working on this article, we could not get an interview with the dean of NYU, who was John Sexton at the time. So we ended up going to a town hall and asking our questions there in public. And I remember I took the mic and I asked John Sexton, why doesn't NYU have a rape crisis center? NYU had or has over 50,000 students and no rape crisis center. NYU. And he, and I guess I said it in this very emotional way because that's how I am, I'm very sensitive. And he goes, oh, not like you're bitter about it or anything. And everybody laughed. And I remember that being a pretty humiliating moment for me as a student there, as a journalist there. And the more I look back on that moment, and obviously I wish I wouldn't maybe have been so emotional because I guess that's a way for people to really discredit you for whatever reason, although emotions are the truth, but we're not going to go there. Um, it was humiliating, actually. And I felt like, oh, I got a small little taste of what the survivors that we interviewed probably experienced when they came forward to their college campuses to complain about not complain, but, you know, report what happened to them. So it was very telling. But obviously it took me years and years to look back on that moment and come to that realization. But yeah, if someone is that, and I think he was pretty proud of himself because he got that big laugh, but it wasn't funny. And so the reason I wanted to make this episode, I didn't want to talk about Donald Trump. I so often don't want to talk about Donald Trump and I don't think I'm alone in that. But after seeing the play, I felt like, oh, wow, this is, mm, mm, I have a lot to say on this. And I think I have something of value to add here. And it's just, I hope that when you're a victim of sexual assault or survivor of sexual assault, I know it is extremely difficult to come forward, to share your story, to tell your story, especially when you know it's a losing battle, probably. And you don't know what justice is going to look like. I think it's still important that you try, you try to fight if you can. The more we can all do to raise awareness about this, the better. And whether you do it by making a podcast episode or you do it by writing a play or you do it by going to court and facing who you have to face, you've made a difference. Even if you lost on paper, you've made a difference. And I hope you know that we all appreciate you. And I hope that you guys will go see Prima Facci while it's still on Broadway. There's a book coming out about it too, so I hope you'll check that out. And I hope that you'll come back next week for episode 26 of The Rule Book. And please follow me on all social media accounts at Serious Actors and subscribe to this podcast if you liked it. All right, see you guys next Monday. Bye.